hey yeah, how about using real-time data and interaction with the particle system? Well, that's what it is made for. So let's start with real-time data. I have an Excel sheet here with some random data. Okay. I created already a workbook node and a range array. Selected a sheet and a column range I want to read out. Here we go. I used the data emitter and added a position single and position range data source. The position single can be bound to the range array node and the data output will feed the position single data source in Y direction. So you see the data is fed to the node and we have some particles now distributed along the Y direction. We need to adjust the min and max range for the position range now. As soon as you scale up the max, you can see that the particles will be distributed along the X axis then. You could now make use of the particle positions. For example, we could visualize it like a line chart by using the extrude renderer. You see, it's that simple to create a 3D line chart out of particles using real-time Excel data. Let's say we want to simply render it as a spline. So we delete everything here and just add a line renderer module. Using the draw lines properties, you can adjust the rendering of the lines. For example, the width and so on. Use some sprites to visualize the peaks. Use a link out and make use of a secondary emitter to emit particles from these points positions. Just to get you an idea that you still have a particle system and can combine modules and other stuff with it. So, real-time data. Let's change a value inside the Excel sheet just because you don't believe it's really a visualization of an Excel sheet. <laughs> you can simply recolorize the whole data particle stream using a gradient and change the color by the height of the particle or chart. You can use a constant color or material or whatever you want. Okay, great. Time to show you a bit of interactivity together with the particle system. I have a nice colorful fontaine with a lot of glitter and stuff. Also, I enabled the non-render objects to show you one of the modules, the range force node. We will use the sphere here as a touch object. It has no block option on alpha. So the touch transformation will not only move the sphere, it will also move an anchor. This anchor's position will now be used for the range force node. So we select the range force node and change its transform property to anchor. This will make it possible to change the range force position only by an anchor. Bind it to the anchor and you see, we move the sphere and the anchor with the range force will follow. Yeah, here you go. We have a force which we can now control interactively. We simply move around the sphere as an interactive touch object. Great. Yeah, one last thing. Most times you forgot about the most basic things. You can use touch buttons to control the particle systems as well. So just simply use such a nuke button and bind it to the trigger burst to achieve such a simple effect. Enjoy. <laughs>